Hi, I'm Jane Hopperich, and I'm here to bring you part three of the How to Quilt Ice Dyed Fabric series. Um, today we're going to talk about another design process, and we're also going to get started on quilting the design that I've chosen for my ice dyed fabric. So I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I, I wanted to share with you another way to design your quilting on your ice dyed fabric. Some people might not be comfortable designing their own, their own design, and I realize that. But I have a friend who is a handy quilter ambassador in South Africa. Her name is Talene Jeffrey, and she has developed these quilting designs. Let's see if you can see that. There's one, and here's one that I used recently. So everything is there that you need. You, get, you can get it in a PDF version that you can print out and make as large or as small as you want. You can get it in a hard copy version, and you can get it also um, if you have uh, digitized, digitized quilting, you can get it um, such as like if you have a pro stitcher, you can get a design to stitch out on that too. So you can, when you get the pattern, you get it with all the free motion filled in, but you also get it with just the bare bones or even less than that, you get just the skeleton part of it so that if you wanna change things up, you can, and that's the beauty of this whole thing. So what I did was I got the PDF, I got the PDF version and I printed mine out. And then once I printed it out, I could transfer this onto my whole cloth. So, but I didn't do it on ice dyed fabric. I decided to do it on a whole cloth. So this is a whole cloth that I just recently have finished and um, I, hope that that's something that um, you consider doing too. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the rulers that we're gonna use when I actually sit down to quilt. I went through all my rulers that I had and found the ones that I thought was gonna, that were gonna work best for this project. And when I'm quilting on my stationary machine, I tend to like smaller rulers just because I feel like I can manage them easier. And again, that's a personal preference, but that just works for me. So I brought my little HQ mini ruler, one of my favorites. I have an oval that I'm gonna be using from the oval set. Actually, I brought two ovals to use. And, um, my an arc from one of the arc sets. I love my arc sets. I use them a lot. And I also brought down my half circle templates, which are nested half circles here. I don't know if you can see that or not. They are a set of six rulers that nest in amongst themselves. If you use half the circle, and then flip it, you can do the other half of the circle. That way you're not trying to manage um, a big circle ruler on your stationary machine, which can be um, a bit of a problem at times. So we're gonna use those. The other thing I wanted to point out is if, especially if you're quilting on your stationary machine, that ruler is helping to push along your fabric. So you wanna make sure that you're using your handy grip. Handy grip is a strip of grip tape and you only need to use a little piece. So basically you can just take that, rip a piece off, peel the backing, and place it right on your ruler. And that's going to help you grip that fabric and push it along. It is very important as a stationary machine quilter, whether you're quilting on a domestic machine or a stationary long arm. So again, that's handy, handy grip. Another thing you're gonna to want to use too is a way to have good contact with your fabric. And that is going to be 
my shingers, which are like my all time favorite gloves to use. They are great because they are ambidextrous. You just put them on and they are soft and flexible and they have some grip to them up in the fingertips. So you can easily just push your fingers along and that's gonna help you grip your fabric. They're breathable. I don't mind wearing them for long periods of time. Another newer item is our Handy Quilter Sweet Spots. I love these because you can just place this down on your fabric. It grips the fabric really well. You don't have to worry about wearing gloves if you're not one that likes to wear gloves and this helps you push them along, push your fabric along. So again, just some things that are nice to have. Um, and let's go over to the machine now and start quilting. So I have put the sure foot on. The sure foot has a higher side profile that butts up really nicely against the ruler. Now you can see I've chosen a half circle ruler, but the circle isn't truly fitting to what um, this is going to be, but I'm going to just make it work for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start going around. Stop, and I am going to clip those threads right there. Okay. Now I'm going to reposition this. Now I'm just going to keep on repositioning this. And do you see I'm helping the ruler? The ruler is helping me to push the fabric. Flip the ruler around. And I'm not getting right on the lines that I drew, but that's okay because those lines are going to go away anyway. So then I got the first circle done. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get another ruler and I'm going to work on the next circle. And then we're going to go and we're going to do some other quilting. So I'm going to go ahead and get my other ruler and I'll meet you back with uh, stitching out this next big circle. Okay, so I'm ready to start on the next, so the larger circle. And again, this ruler is a little bit bigger than what, the, or a little bit uh, off from what the circle is, or I'm sure it's the circle is off from what the rulers are. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go with it. And I'm just going to manipulate the ruler to make it work for me. So I'm going to use both hands pressing down on the ruler to help me guide the machine. And again, I'm in precision mode, so it's not going to go until... Until I move the fabric. Whoop, I went away from the ruler a little bit there. Did you see that? I got a little wobble there. That's okay. We can fix that later. I can um, do some fill work to make up for that. Again, the reason for having the grip tape on there is so that you can use that to make a good contact with the fabric to help you push the fabric and the ruler right along.
there you go and finish that circle now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move along and I am going to stitch out to, I'm going to do some of the straight lines that I wanted to do and also some curves. So we're going to do this, I think we'll do this outer square here. So uh, come back, we'll come back in a minute or two and we'll move on to that. Okay, so I've done a little bit so far, but I want to show you how I um, am going to go about this. I realized after I got this big circle done that that was not, I hadn't intended to fill the whole circle in, but I'm going to leave it there for now because I can always go back and take that out if it doesn't work in the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use my straight ruler. Go down to that first circle and then I'm going to work my way back. I'm always stopping in my needle down position. Then I'm going to work my way around this diamond shape that I've drawn on there. have to travel over that same line to get back to where you need to be. Okay, so you're there. I'm going to switch out rulers and I'm going to use my one of my ovals to do this curved line right here. And then I need to go back stop right there and switch out to my arc ruler Okay, and then we're going to go ahead with our oval ruler again. And that's going to take us over here. And then we can start this diamond shape over here. So don't worry if you go off the line, if you've... Uh, you don't have everything picture perfect because once this is all filled in with free motion afterwards, you'll never be able to see it. Okay, so I'm going to finish stitching this out and get as much of this, the ruler work done. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and um, take out the basting stitches so you can see what I've done so far. And we'll talk about some free motion. <laughs> So the ruler work is done. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the basting out and I'm going to see if I like that full circle in there and if not 
I'm just going to pick those stitches out where I don't want them. Okay, so I have the basting stitches taken out now, and you can you can pretty much see what the um, skeleton of the piece is going to look like. And you know, I've decided to leave the full circle in, and I'm just going to make it work. Um, pattern or our ideas can always be adapted to um, new ideas. So the only other thing I still want to do with my rulers is I want to create, remember we talked about um, in, an, in a previous uh, series was, or a previous episode was that we, I like to create um, channels. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to create an echo with my rulers and the different areas where I want to make them stand out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then will be done and ready to go with free motion. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to that now. Okay, so I had gotten the skeleton done. Now I decided I'm going to add those echoes to create those channels that I said I like to have on my pieces. I am, I've changed from working into precision mode to working in manual mode. I, um, I'm comfortable working in manual mode. I know that's not for everybody and my stitches aren't perfect, but that's okay. In the long run, it's still going to be great. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this one last channel and then we're going to have this ready to go. And again, I'm using the ruler to help push the fabric along. That's basically all that's pushing that fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little locking stitch there. I'm gonna pull my bobbin thread up and I'll cut it. And I'll cut where I started. And there the whole piece is done. Channels, the skeleton, and now the next time we meet, we'll be ready to start free motion quilting and filling all this in and seeing how this just evolves into uh, just a beautiful piece. So I hope that you'll join me next time. And thanks for joining me through this time. And I will see you soon and happy quilting.